In this video, we will be looking at the MIP data cartridge feature of the Mirage 2000C. We will briefly go over the principles of the data cartridge, creating a simple data cartridge using the mission editor, creating a more sophisticated data cartridge using a Lua file, and how to apply the data cartridge in the cockpit. Hello fellow virtual aviators, we are back in the technical and tenacious Mirage 2000C and today we are looking at the use of the data cartridge to update the information in our inertial navigation system. Now this is a nice little feature that can add a sense of milsim realism to your missions or alternatively it can be used on multiplayer servers where waypoint information is not provided or does not suit the sortie you are about to fly. In most fighter aircraft of the era, the various INS waypoint data such as latitude, longitude, altitude and other parameters were programmed before the flight and stored on some form of portable physical media, in this case a cartridge. Rather than manually programming the data on the INS panel, which can be a long and tedious process, the cartridge would be inserted and the information loaded into the system. This feature is now simulated in the Mirage 2000C in DCS World and the pilot can generate their own data cartridges with custom information. For demonstration purposes, we will use the Syria map. There are two methods of generating a data cartridge, either in the mission editor or by creating a Lua file in a suitable text editor. Firstly, we need to create a folder in the parent DCS or DCS.OpenBeta folder under your saved games folder in your user area. The folder must be called data cartridges, all one word with an uppercase D. This is where the Mirage 2000C will look for the cartridges you create. The simplest but more limited way of creating a data cartridge is in the mission editor itself. First, data cartridges are map specific, so we must choose the correct map to build our data set on. So we will choose, in this case, Syria. Place a single Mirage 2000C anywhere on the map using the aircraft tool. The starting position is not important, as this will be determined by the mission file used to run the scenario or server, rather than the data cartridge we are about to create, so let's just place it there in the middle of the sea. We will now build our flight plan using the add waypoint tool as normal. So let's create four navigation waypoints corresponding to some airfields. So let's start with Hattay. And then Basel al Assad. Followed by Aleppo. And then Minak. And we will terminate our flight at Gaziantep. We will edit the altitude at each waypoint. So at waypoint 1, we will set the altitude to 10,000 feet. At waypoint 2, 15,000 feet. At waypoint 3, 20,000 feet. At waypoint 4, 25,000 feet. And our final waypoint at Gaziantep, we will set as our landing waypoint. Very simply, this dataset contains latitude, longitude and altitude information for five different waypoints. We must now save this into the data cartridges folder we have created. So if we go to File and Save As, we are currently looking at the Missions folder, so let's move up to DCS.OpenBeta, and within there we find our data cartridges, and we will save it. We need to give it some form of name, so let's call it Combat Air Patrol 1.
Save that, and the cartridge is ready to be used. Okay, so we are now sitting on the ramp at Incherlik Airbase, and we are going to load our data. Let's uh, boot up the battery and ask the crew chief to set the ground power. Chief, turn on the ground power. Ground power is now we'll on. switch on our INS to standby or VE on the PSM, and we can see that although we have information in our 00, zero waypoint, our current location, all the other waypoints, 0, 01, 0, 04, 11, 12, etc., are showing no latitude or longitude information. To load our data, we need to insert the data cartridge into the MIP, or Module d'Insertion des Paramètres, or Parameter Insertion Module, which is located here. Lift the cover with the right mouse button and the cartridge will appear. Notice that the name we gave to the cartridge, in this case Combat Air Patrol 1, is written on the front of the cartridge itself. If you have more than one cartridge in the Data Cartridges folder, you can cycle through them using the mouse wheel. Left-click on the correct cartridge to select it, and left-click again to insert it into the MIP slot. Data loading will commence immediately, indicated by the yellow MIP indicator light on the PCN display. If the data loads successfully, the indicator will extinguish after about 15 seconds. If it flashes, there has been a fault with the data download. Notice after the data download, there doesn't seem to be any waypoint information here in waypoint address 1. Which waypoint but addresses the data is stored in depends on the number of waypoints programmed on our data cartridge. If we have programmed 10 or fewer waypoints, as is this case, the data will be stored in waypoint addresses 11 through to 20, i.e. waypoint 1 will be waypoint 11, 2 will be 12, etc. If we have programmed 11 or more waypoints, the MIP overwrites all of the waypoints in the INS, so the waypoint addresses will correspond correctly with the waypoint numbers. So we programmed fewer than 10 waypoints, so our first will be located in waypoint or boot address 11. So let's bring up waypoint 11 as our prep waypoint, and we can see that the latitude and longitude information is now stored. Notice please that the altitude information for waypoint 1, which we set as 10,000 feet, has not been added. The waypoint simply takes the ground altitude for the location of the latitude and longitude and we'll see this for all of the waypoints we have programmed. However, taking a quick opportunity to check the latitude and longitude, we will see that these are the correct locations for the airfields we chose. It only remains to complete our startup procedure as normal, get ourselves airborne and navigate in the normal way. The second and more sophisticated method of generating a data cartridge is by using a Lua file. We can find an example of the data cartridge in the documentation folder of the Mirage 2000C under Mods in the DCS World or DCS World Open Beta Installation folder. The file is called example.dtc. It can be edited with any suitable text editor, so let's open it up and take a look at it. Lines 3 to 6 and 31 to 35 and beyond are the data entries. The other text is simply information to help guide you in creating your cartridge. First, let's set up the cartridge using lines 3 and 6. Under Terrain, we will type Syria, as if you remember, cartridges are map specific. Under name, we obviously need to give this flight plan a name, so let's call this cartridge Operation Cyrano.
This will be displayed on the cartridge label when we come to use it. The other two entries in lines 4 and 5 need not be changed and have been included for future features yet to be implemented. We now need to program our waypoints, for which we have been provided with some examples at the bottom. The flight manual states that a waypoint entry can include all or some of the data displayed here. At minimum, a latitude and longitude must be set, but we can see here that we can include some complex information, especially when it comes to ingress direction, time on target, or waypoint offsets, excellent when programming complex precision strike missions. As shown in the example file, there are different formats for quoting coordinates and offsets. And where an altitude is not quoted, the cartridge will automatically use the ground height. Distances are quoted in meters, but can be changed to feet using the multiplier asterisk FT, or nautical miles by asterisk NM. We'll flash forward in time now after which we will have a mission detailed and ready to go. Each parameter associated with a waypoint is separated by a comma. Use the examples given as a guide to create your own. Okay, so we have come up with a flight plan of five waypoints. We've added one on using the same format. Waypoint 1 we've called Navpoint Hattie and is located at the latitude and longitude of Hattie Air Base and we've set an altitude of 10,000 feet. Waypoint 2 we've named Navpoint Ryak and that is at latitude and longitude of Ryak Airfield. We've set the altitude for 4,000 feet there and also included a route desired RD of 180 degrees true. We have programmed two target ingress points, target 1IP and target 2IP, set latitude and longitude for the ingress point, but included a offset for each one. For waypoint 3, we've included the offset in the rho and theta format, and for target 2, we've included the offset in the difference in northing and difference in easting format, as indicated there, 3,000 meters to the north and 4,000 meters to the east. Waypoint 5 for our terminal airbase should be the latitude and longitude of Akrotiri, but I've included a small mistake in the longitude. I've also included the desired runway heading of 2901, the desired glide slope of 3 degrees, and a corresponding desired route of 2901 degrees to match the heading of the runway. For the two target offsets and the terminal airbase, we have not included any altitude information, so hopefully the cartridge will use the ground height as default. The mistake in waypoint 5 should place the waypoint over the sea, so the altitude should be 000. We could continue to add waypoints in the same format up to a maximum of 20, but for now let's save this into the data cartridges folder. And we'll save it as Operation Cyrano.dtc. Okay, let's go and give it a try, see if it's worked. Okay, we are back on the ramp at Incherlik Air Base, so we'll apply power, power up the INS to standby, and input our data cartridge. We've programmed fewer than 10 waypoints, so our waypoint 1 will eventually take the address at waypoint 11. Let's input the cartridge. We need to cycle through them to find Operation Cyrano, which is there. Each time we rearm or refuel, the list of data cartridges updates, so we can drop new cartridges into the data cartridge folder without having to reload the game. We now need to wait for the data to be loaded, and just monitor that using the yellow indication light. 
And there we have our data loaded. We can check the information is correct by selecting each waypoint as our prep waypoint. So we can see here our waypoint 1 in address 11 has the correct altitude of 10,000 feet that we set. Latitude and longitude for waypoint 2 in address 12 is correct. Our altitude should be 4,000 feet, which it is. And we also set a route desired of 180 degrees true, which has also been set. Three and four in addresses 13 and 14 should have some offset information programmed as well as the latitude and longitude. The altitude has been set as the ground height, as we didn't select that. But if we move over to rho theta on the offset side, we can see that the offset that we set has been converted to nautical miles automatically, and the angle is there, 0, 050 0 degrees. Waypoint 4 in address 14 has also been given the ground height, as we did not set an altitude, as shown there. And it should also have a delta L, delta G offset of plus 3,000 meters and plus 4,000 meters north and east, respectively, which it does, here quoted in kilometers. Finally, waypoint 5 in address 15 should have been at Akrotiri. Its altitude, however, has been set to zero, as the latitude and longitude give a waypoint over the sea. The other information has been set correctly, however. The runway heading and the desired glide slope are set as 2901 and 3 degrees, and we also set a route desired of 2901. With the MIP data cartridge information loaded, as if by magic, the waypoint information on our kneeboard is updated to show the waypoint names. As ever, let's bring up the kneeboard and then advance to the waypoint page. And we can see there under addresses 11 through to 15 are the names of our waypoints 1 to 5, Navpoint Hate, Navpoint Ryak, and so on. Well, as ever, I hope that was useful for you. A nice little feature that makes the Mirage 2000C module just a little bit more interesting. With continued thanks to my patrons, especially Yan11, Lakota21, Plabs, Blake, Armin, and Star Lover. Your support keeps this channel going. Feel free to do the usual thing, like, subscribe, comment, and share. But until next time, virtual aviators, I look forward to seeing you online in the skies. This is Reva saying, last call.